I was scrolling through social media and came up on a girl describing her journey to prostitution. She mentioned the backstory and was describing how it went from someone violating her which caused her to turn to it. She said that this individual had pictures of her lady parts and sent them out to the public just as she had acquired some degree of social media fame. In that moment, she figured the most intimate part of her was already being exposed. So why not let it all out and make some money from it? That's when she became a prostitute. As time went by, she saw that more and more she felt naked physically and mentally and it didn't help that everyone she came into contact with judged her brutally. So she decided she would leave the country she lived in to pursue prostitution elsewhere. After all, nobody would know her where she was going and certainly the earning potential would be far greater. Anyway, she went and as she predicted, she made more money, but the part of her that felt exposed and vulnerable never went away. And it seemed that no matter where she went, there was so much judgment. I tuned into my own thought process as I listened to her and I realized that I didn't feel any judgment towards her. Maybe that was because I could identify myself in her. Granted, I've never been a prostitute by any stretch of the imagination, but I felt like I could relate. She chose to make a living through prostitution because she was already at the mercy of society and the box that they already placed her in, so she took the next natural step and followed through with the expectations. That's when I thought to myself, isn't that what we're already doing? At least the majority of us, we follow through with the natural order of what is expected of us based on our environment, our upbringing, what our ego decides for us. And for many of us, it lands us in careers or relationships or whatever that violates our spiritual and mental well-being. How many of us choose to be lawyers, doctors, nurses, engineers, go into corporate jobs and we are stripped of our peace of mind, our dignity, our health and overall welfare only because it seems like this is the path that we were directed to? My next thought was, we judge adult industry workers because to us, they are reducing themselves physically and morally for a dollar, but most of us are reducing ourselves mentally, physically, and spiritually for the same dollar. The difference is, society tells us that violating our energy bodies for the attainment of status, the so-called mainstream jobs, is fair trade. But they are literally doing the same thing. The question is, which of these carry a heavier weight? Is it moral violation, physical violation, spiritual violation, emotional violation? Which is worth sacrificing over the others? I cannot judge a prostitute for violating society's moral construct if I don't want to be judged for not wanting to participate in society's socioeconomical construct. If a prostitute is being robbed of her spiritual energy by allowing hundreds of men to enter her body, I am being robbed of my spiritual energy by allowing a classist system called a workplace to completely exhaust me at every opportunity. A lot of us absolutely despise waking up in the morning because what we're heading to is anxiety and stress which does more harm than good if you really look at it. Imagine having 60% of your waking existence drained by the powers that be, especially if the point of all of that is only to make ends meet. Or in another instance, I have a friend who has a lot of children. She isn't particularly wealthy. She's very educated and has a lot of management experience. As a matter of fact, she's never been out of a job. She's been floating financially all along, but all of a sudden the coronavirus hit. All income was cut off and she had no way of taking care of her kids. Two years had passed and not only was she not bringing in money, she had exhausted all of her savings. To make matters worse, during those two years, she had one more child. Fortunately, she landed a new job coming out of the pandemic, but she was so much in debt that it would take her another couple of years to recover. The first response to her situation was, man, you should always be prepared for loss of income. But really, how many of us can withstand two years of no income without falling really deep in debt? Besides, these days, the really successful people are not necessarily college educated, but have a talent that they choose to capitalize on. If I thought about where I would be if the same series of events happened to me, maybe I would be in the same position. When you put yourself in another person's shoe, suddenly you realize that everyone does what he or she does for a very good reason. And while we all have choice and free will, no one has ever prayed for negative outcomes. That is why love is important. Love for self as well as love for others. 
Where there is love, there is always compassion. In astrology, there is Venus, which is the planet of love. Then there is Neptune, which exhibits love in its most powerful form. Where love is expansive and has no boundaries. Neptune represents the greater consciousness where there is no separation, one human to another. Where there is no separation between you and me, I begin to treat you as I treat myself. This alludes to the fact that love and judgment can never occur simultaneously. So I guess all I'm trying to say is, if you come from a place of love, there is no judgment. In order to not judge, you must have compassion. And compassion boils down to whether you can identify yourself in another person's